I'm Thomas Baldrick, ASH 2014, joined now by Dr. Fortunato Morobito from Italy. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you. All right, so we're going to talk about an Italian retrospective multi-center study looking at bendamustine in combination with rituximab for previously untreated CLL patients. Why did you feel this study needed to be done? Oh, in chronic lymphocytic leukemia, we actually have two major problems. The first one concerns uh, those patients who have uh, the P53 disruption, which actually up to now uh, deserves some attention in terms of the chemotherapeutic approach. And we hope that the new drugs such as ibrutinib could be give an answer for this kind of patients. On the other hand, we have a category of patients, all patients with uh, uh, some uh, comorbidities, and you know in that case it's, it's uh, quite difficult uh, to administer uh, combination chemotherapy such as fludarabine, uh, cyclophosphamide, and uh, rituximab, which is uh, actually uh, still uh, a gold standard for uh, patients with chronic lymphocytic leukemia. However, we have uh, actually we, we, we have some results regarding the randomized trial and Dutch randomized trial. Uh, in which patients were actually randomized uh, uh, in, uh, to receive uh, either uh, uh, fludarabine containing regimens or bendamustine containing regimens. And the results uh, are in favor of the uh, fludarabine containing regimens. However, uh, what we, uh, and we, what we, what we, uh, we obtained some results on the, by using a sub-analysis uh, in, uh, in older patients, and uh, in that category of patients, uh, bendamustine is, uh, is uh, absolutely identical in terms of no clinical outcomes uh, as compared with the uh, fludarabine, uh, cyclophosphamide, and rituximab. So what we, we did uh, to, was to collect data retrospectively, uh, uh, close to 108, uh, maybe now we, have, we collect 200 cases, uh, in which we uh, we we CLL patients any age, and uh, with the, uh, giving a bendamustine 90 milligrams two days for two days and rituximab, and uh, we collect data and the results are really interesting. Uh, first of all, we demonstrate that uh, all patients could receive safely uh, these uh, regimens. And uh, we, we got about 35% uh, of complete remission and an overall response rate of close to 90, 93%, with the progression free survival two years of uh, about 8-7%. Uh, that means that uh, we can uh, uh, use this uh, combined with arrangements for, for uh, all patients. On the other hand, the, this uh, randomized trial, the Dutch randomized trials, uh, clearly demonstrated that uh, there is no difference uh, for those patients with low risk chronic lymphocytic leukemia, such as uh, mutated cases, uh, no P53. And uh, um, uh, in this case, the, there is no difference in terms of progression free survival. So the other question could be, uh, could uh, we choose uh, a low risk category uh, of young patients who could in some way receive uh, with uh, good results uh, this, uh, this uh, bendamustine con con containing regimens. And what we are going to do is to collect more data to compare uh, younger versus older patients in, uh, to, to see whether or not also younger patients could receive this, uh, this kind of regimen. What do you think the clinical implications are of what you've discovered? Uh, it, it, the bendamustine and the rituximab is easy, easy, easy to, to give these patients. The toxicity is very low. We got only 6% uh, of grade 3 to 4 uh, infection and uh, the, about uh, five, uh, about 50% uh, of patients uh, grade one to two uh, anemia or thrombocytopenia. So it's uh, really uh, safely for, for patients and easy for the doctors to, <laughs> to follow patients on the other hand. Very good, thank you Dr. Morbido, appreciate you. your time. Thank you very much. Good luck to you.